Welcome to the Kendrick Lamar Watch the Party Die Lyrics Breakdown. This is a three verse song, so this will be a lengthy video because we like to go in depth. I think it's time to watch the party die. This got too wicked to apologize. It's different getting whacked than disqualified. Kendrick begins his opening verse with a subtle double entendre alluding to Party Next Door and Drake recently announced collab album. Not only mentioning how Drake's career has ended or will be ending when the numbers of that release come out, but also the music industry's negative influence on today's generation. And he feels that Drake had a major assist on that. Also, Kendrick says he won't apologize. It's gotten way too real and serious because it could have indeed been just a friendly fade. But when one person hit a little too hard, there's no turning back. We even kill the killers cause they like taking innocent lives. Burn a whole village, we start over. It's really that time. Why reason with these niggas if they can't see the future first? Why Kendrick I continues to target OVO members and also real life killers or gangsters who take innocent people and abuse them doing crimes like drugging, trafficking, R-word, PDF file, and other horrible crimes. This intro is definitely like a meet the grams energy, and you can see it is kind of like a part two. He's taking a cerebral and almost therapeutic approach while having aggressive lines like burning the village down just to start over, meaning there has to be a cleanse, almost like the biblical story of Noah, who also works for Drake as his engineer. Notice many of Kendrick lines are engulfed in on Tondras. Why argue with these clowns if the circus is well at work? Just walk that man down. That'll do everyone a solid. It's love, but tough love sometimes got to result in violence. If you parade in gluttony without giving truth to the youth, the graveyard is company. Just tell us what casket the truth. Say party more than Tell me what are you working for? They glorify scamming, you get chipped over this credit card. Kendrick is directly talking about influencers, radio personalities, rappers, ex-rappers, industry people when he talks about clowns and circuses. Because what's a circus job? To entertain, trick, or sometimes scare? Kendrick talks about how destroying Drake's career helped out everyone in the industry, allowing themselves to feel like they're not alone waking them up to a more potential creep which have a lot of energies and also many videos of his creep behavior flooding the internet kendrick saying all of this exposing to drake was rooted in love and sometimes tough love result in pain or violence in order for the person to open up their eyes on their own action because it's not just about drake it's about propelling the culture to the opposite of what he represents like a more substance and, and purpose is what Kendrick wants uh, and less of a pacifying and partying. Now, gluttony is a biblical term for habitual greed and Kendrick points out during the battle that Drake has a gambling problem, soliciting women problems, which trickles down to his music and now he's misleading the youth to be more like him. Now he's partying more than women and alluding to Drake's heart not being in the game. So what is he really working for? Instead of giving the youth the truth on the psychological aspects of life, childhood trauma and self-healing like what Kendrick Lamar did on the most recent album Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers you do the hard influencers talk down cuz I'm not with the basic but they don't hate me they hate the man that I represent the type of man that never did ride cuz I want a favor the man this is a diss to not only social media influencers academics even Adam 22 but all who's alike who constantly attacks Kendrick Lamar for being himself for trying to wake his people up from the eternal damnation and wanting him to be like everyone else because he shows them something that they can never be which is pure and a genuine person that does not have to fake like or fake love someone or be a yes man just to have a favor down the road in hopes of an interview or a link up the man that resides in patience so where the soldiers at the ones that lost it all and learned to learn from that a thirst for life head inside a book because he concerned with that information that'll change his life because he yearns for that dedication finding out what's right because he can earn from that kendrick backs up his last line of the type of person he represents that the influencers hate which is someone that is eager to learn more about the meaning of life so much dedication that he's reading books yearning for more information that would change his his life and give him true spiritual evolution and understanding and instead of profiting off of being a yes man he could earn more or just the same being spiritually sound i feel for the women that deal with the clown and nerd can't blame them today they ain't really got much to work with how many 
worked harder than a lot of you niggas. Will trade all of y'all for nip. I can't be proud of you niggas. With this verse, Kendrick talks about the women in this day and age having to deal with a society full of men who are creeps. Like two of the influencers he's alluding to is Academics and Adam22, who both are strong, who both had strong cases being sued for allegedly R-wording, defamation, essay, and way more. Kendrick also says that the women are more solid and harder than a lot of the men, alluding to this generational role reverse that could have been pushed during the Drake era, saying that he would trade the life of a lot of these evil people for Nipsey Hussle, who represented the people the influencers hate, which is pure and genuine. God, give me life. Dear God, please give me peace. Dear God, please keep these lame niggas away from me. Dear God, keep me shining the f they really think. Pocket watching, you must be the police. God bless these words. Dear God, bless how I think. Dear God, draw the line. They trying to confuse them with me. Dear God, please forgive me. You knowing how hard I tried. I think it's time for me to watch the party die. <laughs> Get them gone, we go watch the party die. <laughs> Send them home, we go watch the party die. The chorus of this song is a prayer from the wicked energies and the people in the industry. He's asking God to give him way more meaning to his words and have way more power in his mind. Asking God to forgive him because he had to go to war and get violent, state of speak, basically lyrically, and how hard it was for him to hold back everything he wanted to get off his chest for so many years, but the time is now for the party to basically die. I think it's time to watch the party die. Street niggas and the corporate guys, the rappers that report the lies, I need their families mortified. We can do life without them, get their bodies organized. Tell me if you oblige. Kendrick not only wants the partying to die, but also the street culture and the corporate culture who profits off of stealing professionally or legally in order to fit an agenda. He wants their families to be mortified, which means to be humiliated, ashamed, or embarrassed, and is asking for the people who feels the same to let him know, speak up, speak out. No more pillow talking, jump starting neighborhood wars, dirty mac and because your spirit is insecure, the flashy nigga with nasty decisions using money as a backbone. I want his head cracked before he's back home. The this could be another jab at Drake and another entendre because not only is Drake known for sleeping with other people's wives or girlfriends like the ex-owner of Twitter, for example, Jack, which ignites beefs or wars, but also the men who partake in being with someone's girl of an opposite gang in order to ignite or spark a war. Hendrick exposed a lot of men who use his money as a way to feel as if they're real or are authentic using it as their clutch to pull women or abuse them it could also be another diss to academics and more alike he wants a physical harm done to them before they're back home that's how much he wants this energy to cease radio personality pushing propaganda for salary let me know when they turn up as a casualty i want agony assault and battery i see a new earth filled with beautiful people making humanity work kendrick also talks about the compromised radio personalities who sell the culture wrong information and push the oppressor's agenda for money he wants them to have bad luck he's literally cursing all of these people because you know if you talk about music and how it's esoteric and you're talking about how much power and magic is behind these words and these prayers are all real so the amount of power that he's evoking into the world this is literally a curse to those type of people because he's basically saying it needs to be a new world a new earth can be filled with beautiful people making humanity work and evolve without tearing each other down and having hidden agendas let's kill the followers that follow up on popping mollies from the obvious degenerates that's failing to acknowledge the hope that we trying to spread if i'm not his vote then you need to bring his head or film high res Kendrick Lamar is dissing the blinded fans and followers who listen to these street men fake rappers influencers and corporate guys into doing drugs like Molly and other obvious radical things right and he's also talking about the radical youth or the radical people who feel to acknowledge the positive messages and hope that artists like Kendrick Lamar are trying to spread to the people if that person or fan or follower doesn't like him then he basically is telling y'all to cut their heads off and he'll even film it in high res Resolution. God, give me life. Dear God, please give me peace. Dear God, please keep these lame niggas away from me. Dear God, keep me shining. The f really think. Pocket watching, you must be the police. God bless these words. Dear God, bless how I think. Dear God, draw the line. They trying to confuse them with me. Dear God, please forgive me. You knowing how hard I tried. I think it's time for me to watch the party die. Sometimes I wonder what Lecrae would do. Niggas up or show them just what prayer do. I want to be empathetic, my heart like D1, but I will. 
It's time to get these devils out the way. Heavy metal's on my swirl. Now, Lecrae is one of the most, if not the most popular Christian rapper who Kendrick Lamar name drops, asking what would he do if he was in the industry like Kendrick Lamar's? Do you beat them up or do you pray for change? Expressing the inner conflict and battle that he has to go through on the spiritual path, trying to wake the masses up, but also being filled with demons. You know what I'm saying? It's another entendre because Drake has an album called Demon's Tape. He clearly has a phrase where he's talking about the six which is also means Toronto, it can also be interpreted as demonic by religious views or people. Kendrick wants to be empathetic, but sometimes he literally wants to rip their heads off and just destroy them. And instead of saying that, he paused, still showing the restraint through his lyricism and the fight that it takes to defeat a demon. He also talks about the sword, which is a double entendre, he talks about for heavy metal. So now we're talking about heavy metal, the sword, this is the genre of demonic energy. We settle hard disputes today. The ghetto Hollywood divorce. Say hello to your future fate. The culture bread with carnivores. You let them snack, they eat your face. The signatures is being forged. Kendrick Lamar is saying how the way Drake and all of the Hollywoods is basically getting exposed is almost as if it's like a divorce from the people. It's basically a breakup. It's a change. We're basically tired and these people need to say hello to their future fate. Basically is what Kendrick Lamar is saying here. And he also talks about the culture is riddled with carnivores, people who want to take all your money and leave you with very little or nothing. You let them take a little bit, basically they'll take your whole face. They'll take your whole entire catalog, right? So that's kind of like a double entendre for Drake who dropped a song recently called No Face. So Kendrick Lamar is alluding to signatures being forged. A lot of these things meaning that a lot of people are being kind of forced into deals or don't even know how they even got deals. Like it's a bunch of stuff that's, that he means by that specific lyric that's probably going to come more to light as time goes on. They wonder why I'm not enthused to drop. The more visible you get, the more your spiritual is tried. It's cynical to say I know these artists petrified. The end result in jail by Jezebel, a drug up full of lies. Now, Kendrick also addresses the narrative that he's not excited to drop music. But to him, he explains that the more visible you are and the more attainable you are, the more likely someone it is to try you and to kind of take you out of your spiritual realm, right? So avoiding basically negative energies or moments is kind of what's on his mind. Kendrick knows that a lot of artists are in fear and a paranoid of not knowing how their life will end up either in prison or child support like Tyrese or drugged full of lies like Drake. Critical. I know my physical is tested all the time. I'm pitiful. Sunk in place soon as I'm questioning my pride. I'm seeing ghosts. Blacking out relapsing one thought at a time. I spend no feelings that ain't mine. I'm in my feelings when I slide. I mean, a nigga wonder what Lecrae would do. Now Kendrick Lamar alludes to being in a sunken place whenever he's questioning his pride because he always is being tested or provoked that's what basically comes with the game or the industry he battles his old self a lot blacking out throughout and through in basically ghosts of the past that he basically had to deal with or maybe trauma that he has to deal with that he overcame but it's still like sometimes it'll just come in blimps and he's saying the feeling when he slide his with his opposition and try to go attack them like kind of how he felt with drake sometimes he'd be in his feelings in, the, in those situations now he doubles down and says what would lecrae do in this situation terrence martin said i'm mentally with Larry. It's true. I flood the market with my best regards. I paid your dues. And so what's up if you ain't one of ours? It's bad news. My nigga J. Estrada said I gotta burn it down to build it up. That confirmation will as fuck. It ain't too many will as us. Locking in to what I trust. Looking outside. The kids live tomorrow. Cause today the party just died. Terrence Martin is someone who's constantly worked with Kendrick Lamar. He's a saxophonist who produced Kendrick Lamar as far back as 2011. He talks about how they compare Kendrick Lamar's mind to having many layers, right? Kind of alluding to his geniusness and how they basically motivated him into being the best version of himself, right? So Jay Estrada appears to be someone that follows Kendrick Lamar or Kendrick Lamar follows, right? And he might know him personally. We really don't know. He must have told him to burn it all down lyrically in order to build it all back up is why he said a new earth because the children will live tomorrow because today drake career and party just died now that'll be all let me know if i missed any part or if there's any part that you figured out that whoa this has something to do with this this has something to do with that kendrick lamar has an extreme double and triple entendre skill within wrapped around a storytelling ability that it's gonna take weeks almost to really dissect every single thing this was just 24 hours of the song dropping let me know how i did let me know your feedback let me know how you feel about this whole entire battle and is this basically an opening to round two let me know what y'all feel it's being a boy from the room peace